Hi, folks. This is Conrad, your host today on the Advanced FreshBooks webinar. Um, so first and foremost, on the dashboard, uh, we have the, the main button, the big green button, our friend. Uh, from this button, you can hit Create New and create just about everything in the account from a client, an invoice. Uh, you can make an expense and as well as recurring templates, track other income from outside of FreshBooks. You can make estimates and proposals to send to clients. Uh, you can create a credit if you need it, say if someone had overpaid you or you were just being really nice. Now uh, you can create bills uh, and of course vendors. The overall page itself has a bunch of different reports on it uh, and these charts sort of give a, a brief look so obviously the outstanding invoices report will show any outstanding invoices uh, for the purposes of our webinar today i have stripped as much out of the account so we can start from fresh uh, so there isn't currently anything in there but at the end of the webinar i'll come back here so you can see what it looks like um, when you have overdue invoices they'll be in red yellow is for outstanding so sent owing but not yet overdue uh, and this chart will show you how many days it's overdue the total profit report takes over from your profit and loss report so it'll actually compare your income minus expenses or as you can see your sales less cost of goods sold less expenses for profit uh, in my account i seem to have a ten thousand dollar expense somewhere and that's what's causing this we have our revenue streams so as you record income through invoices and other income and give it categories, it'll pop up here and let you know where your revenue is coming from. You're spending as well, what you're spending your expenses on based on the category within our system. You can also create custom categories uh, and then unbilled time. So anytime you've tracked that needs to be billed out will be shown up here as well. Again, with everything we're going to do in the account today, we'll kind of fill this up. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all colorful and has a lot of content in there for you. So for today's presentation, I always like to start with the client uh, because that is the most base thing needed for everything to run in our system. So there's a few ways to create clients as there are a few ways to do everything in our account, but to create a client, the easiest way, as mentioned, create new client. Uh, as Holly is here helping us today, we're gonna create this for Holly. And I don't know, I'll be uncreative today, I guess. I'll use fake name. Company will be FreshBooks. Uh, and I am going to provide an email address because it's necessary. Um, the one I like to use, though, is simply going to be fake at freshbooks.com. Um, when creating a client, uh, there's quite a bit of control. You don't have to enter in this information. You're certainly welcome to. And 90% of the businesses that we assist on a daily basis, they have some form of this filled out. Um, you also get the client settings. So if you feel that someone is going to need a nudge on a reminder for an invoice, or you just as a general policy want it there, you can set up reminders. You can set up to three uh, and you can control if they happen after or before the due date and how many days prior to. For my purposes, I've just set them up very simply one, two, and three days after due date. You're welcome to come in and type whatever you like. You can also set up the charging of late fees. So if an invoice goes unpaid, you can enable late fees and they could be a percentage or flat rate amount. And the percentage can be based off the total value of the invoice or the outstanding value. Again, totally up to you. And you can also dictate when or how many days after the due date those appear. Uh, you do also have the option to control currency and language. So if this client uh, is going to be always building Canadian dollars or euros or any other currency you might work in, you can do that. Uh, our default in the system is USD, uh, as well as the language being English, uh, although we do have quite a few other options. Um, and what these change is some of the headings within our system. Lastly, uh, is our invoice attachments. Um, so these allow you to attach a PDF copy of the invoice to the email that gets sent to your clients. And again, I'll show you where this goes. But for our purposes today, I will be enabling this. And we're going to hit save. So now that we've created 
the client of Holly. Um, it will take us by default to our client's page and you can kind of see what this looks like. So you can navigate here from the dashboard simply by clicking on clients, easy peasy, or when creating a client, it'll take you here. Uh, what will happen next is basically up to you. So for our purposes, I'm going to show you how to track time and expenses towards a client as well as a project. Um, so one thing to note on our client's page, you'll have your recently active. So this will show the top four or five clients that have had some level of activity because we've created Holly. That's our top one. If you have made an invoice for your client, if you've tracked time towards them, edited the client, done anything, they will appear as the recently active. And once you have four or five clients and this fills up, this will be the position for the most recent activity that was done. Uh, for our purposes, uh, I'm also going to show you what this is. So down here is the list of all clients. Obviously, if you have more than what can be held up here, you'll want to see all of them. And from here, you can actually do quite a bit. So you can click on right here, this bar anywhere, and it'll take you into the client profile, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, you can edit the client details, you can archive your client, or you can delete your client if needed. Um, Please note your particular plan that you have in FreshBooks will have a limited number of clients allowed. Light plan has five, plus plan has 50, premium or premier has um, unlimited, and then select as well has unlimited. So if you're on light or plus, uh, you might want to watch how many clients you have. If you hit your cap and you're done billing your client, you can always delete that client that will remove them from the active roster. Uh, and if needed, you can always undelete them later by clicking on or deleted. It'll bring up the list of all deleted clients. And then you simply select the one you want and undelete. So let's track some time and expenses towards Holly. So hypothetically, Holly's asked us to do a job and we want to make sure we can let them know what that's all about and what we can do for them. So we're going to pop in here. I'm going to click on this to open the client profile where I get an overview of said client uh, and our relationship tab if I want to write notes. Uh, and as mentioned, we're going to do some work for Holly. So my go to is the back deck. So Holly has asked us to build a nice back deck for them uh, so that they can enjoy the sunshine. So my first thing to show you guys is going to be a project. Uh, so a project functions as almost like a client as well. Uh, it's a client within a client. Uh, it allows you to organize information and data uh, without sort of having things spread out. So from Holly's client account here, we're gonna click on projects and then create, oh, there we go. Click on projects and then create, uh, or click on the plus button to create a new project. From this view, you can see that because I've created this within the client account of Holly, it's already assigned to them. Uh, you can see the team members involved. If you click on the plus sign, you can add more. I have myself, and then we have the client of Holly. You can enable your client to see the project. Um, this will allow them to see basically what's getting tracked, any notes, stuff like that. Uh, it's fairly rare, but it is an option. And so we need to enter a name for our project. So back deck is my go-to. We're going to add a description. And I could choose to put an end date on the project or an hourly total. It is entirely up to you how you want to set up your project. Uh, this is more important when it comes into the different types of projects that we offer. Um, so to touch on that, so we do hourly based projects where every expense, every hour you track towards the project is billed out at the end of said project. Where the end date and hourly totals come into more play uh, has to do with you tracking information for yourself, as well as if you have a flat rate project. If this project was flat rate, I would dictate the total cost of the expense or of the project, sorry. Uh, and at the end of the project, when I go to invoice it, 
that is what the cost will be. And every hour or expense I've tracked will simply go against the uh, profitability of said project. So that way you can know how lucrative it was for you. We can also have services. So by default in my account, Carpentry is a service that's added to every single project. And I'll touch on this, how to set that up in just a minute, um, but you can always add more services. So if we're building a back deck, we need some Carpentry. We also need to dig uh, fence posts. Uh, and of course, we're gonna need to pour concrete. So now that I have three services, we can also look at other ways we can bill our clients. So we can set billable rates to single hourly rate. And this would mean every single hour, no matter what we're doing, will be tracked at the same rate, whether it's a penny, a million dollars, whatever your rate is, you can put it in here, but everything you do, no matter what the, the, that thing is, will be that rate. We could do team member rates. So if you have multiple team members invited or contractors, you can set up the different team rates based on who is doing the work. And finally, you could set up service rates. So if carpentry is $15 an hour, concrete pouring is $10 an hour, and digging a hole is, I'll say five bucks an hour, um, I can set those rates up here. I can hit done. And now every hour tracked towards those, will be at that rate. You can also set up your cost rate. So if you have team members, as you do have yourself, you can set up how much you have to pay that person per hour. Where this comes in handy is if you're tracking how much you're paying out for the work to be done and how much you're charging your client. Again, profitability here. Um, you can also set up a project-wide expense. So any single expense that gets added to this project will have X number of markup on it. Uh, it can be as little as point or 1%, sorry, or as high as 1,000, right, I suppose, 9,999. Uh, totally up to you. For the purposes of our demonstration today, I'm not going to worry about it uh, because it's functionally doesn't add too much uh, to what I'm showing you and how it's done. Um, but we've pretty much set up this project. It is good to go. So we're going to hit save. So now what we're looking at is the project dashboard, uh, similar to the client profile, but this is for the project itself. Uh, we can see the hours logged, currently none. We can check out the profitability. Currently, nothing's tracked, no expenses, hence no profit. Uh, and we can go in, see time tracking, invoices, expenses, sorry, estimates, expenses, services, and reports, um, all regarding what this project is going to entail. So now that we've got this project set up, we can start doing some work. So first, we're going to build a back deck for Holly. We've got to go out and spend some money. We've got to buy wood, concrete, shovels, nails, all that good stuff. So I am going to show you the long way of doing this. We could sit here, hit expenses, hit the green button, create an expense. But if we come over to our dashboard, we can also hit create new and expense. Or from the expenses section, hit new expense or hit this. I want to make sure I show you folks a variety of options. So I'm going to click it down here. Um, all right, so let's add a merchant. So if I'm going to go buy lumber and stuff, my local store, I believe is a Home Depot. Depending on where you are, you might have a very different hardware store. That's just the one that's near me. Uh, we've got the date of said expense. I can backdate it if maybe you didn't track something yet, you forgot, whatever happens, happens. You can backdate. So we're just going to leave it for today, though. The grand total of my expense I'll say $100. I'm going to add a category. So our system has default parent categories and subcategories. Uh, parent categories, you'll most note they don't have any sort of odd marking other than the image. The subcategories have this little L to show they're indented. Uh, you can create custom categories. As you can see here, this is one of my custom ones. I also have one here for rent, lumber, and wood. Uh, to create it, you would simply type in what you want. 
because it already exists, it's pulling it up for me. But if I add in another character, I could create another one. Uh, when you do this, it'll keep the name and it'll ask you to give it a parent category to put this under. Previously, I've done supplies. Typically, other expenses is the most popular, but that's how you would do it. And just click on save for our purposes. I'm going to go ahead, scroll down and click on wood. The description of the thing, I'll just put two by fours. And we're going to assign it to a client or project. So this is sort of a key uh, for organizing your information. So because I only have one client, you'll see internal, and then you'll see my singular client and the project. If I assign this to the client, it will not appear in the project. Uh, however, if I send it to the project, it will still appear within the client. Um, so because we're going more granular from client into project, that's where I'll put it. And now you might be thinking, Conrad, you're still missing information though. So if you have more detailed stuff you wanna put in here, you can still do that. You can attach a receipt. So if you have taken a, a picture of a receipt you've got from your store where you've bought in your materials, uh, you can easily go in and hit attach. A nice window pops out and you can go in and add in anything you like. However, I'm going to click on advanced expense settings, which takes us to this window. So now you can just see the client or project I've assigned it to. I can mark it as billable so I can bill them for it. I can include the receipt image on the invoice. So if I upload the image here by checking this off, it'll actually appear on the invoice as well. Uh, and I could add a markup if I wanted. Again, for my purposes today, I'm not worried about it, but just know that if you do, it does not appear on the invoice. It won't show $100 plus markup. It simply shows the total after markup. You can also make it a recurring expense. If this is something you want to track monthly, like a phone bill, you could make a recurring expense. Again, we can change the currency. It is a cost of goods sold because we're going to charge it to our client. Uh, and so we're just about done. The last thing I like to point out is taxes. So you might notice that I've entered a grand total first and now I'm adding taxes. I have a number of here that I've pre-created. You'll have to create your own in your system um, because every state, city, country has their own sets of taxes. So we can't possibly monitor all of them. So we allow you to create what you need as you need it. Uh, for ourselves here in Canada, it's 13%. It's what I'm familiar with. So I'm going to click 13% and hit apply. And you'll now notice 13% of $100 is $1,150. Hence, my subtotal is $88.50. We've built this system this way because when you get your receipt at the end of the day, it'll have the grand total at the bottom. You can add that first to make life easy and then go up and add taxes as necessary. So now that we've assigned it to our client, we've made it billable. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now we're on the expenses page and you can see our most recently updated. We can see the expense from the list and we even see the status. So invoices, expenses, time tracked, all that stuff will have statuses. Um, this one, because it is something we can bill, it shows unbillable. Uh, once it's put onto an invoice, as I'll show you later, it will become billable. Uh, and if it is something that is not billable, we haven't allowed that, that status just won't appear. And similar statuses exist for everything else, which I'll cover as we go. So because we've tracked this in expenses, I did wanna show you what it looks like in a project. Uh, so we're gonna pop over to our project, we're going to click on said project. And now on profitability, we can see we have some costs here. We've also got the profit. Now you might notice I've tracked $100, yet my cost is $88.50. The reason for that is in our system, taxes aren't something that 
you deal with, like you appreciate you have to file taxes and all that stuff, but taxes are something you pay to the government. It's not actually your profit. Even when someone pays an invoice to you, if there's tax on it, that chunk is for the government, not yourself. Um, so it will not factor into certain reports like the profit and loss, uh, as well as over here on our profitability report. But we can come in and check out expenses. And there it is. So next, we've got to take some time to work on the deck. We have to build it. So we're going to come over to time tracking. Uh, we could do this in here, click time tracking, make a new entry or start a timer. But we're going to check out the time tracking page. So this page as a whole gives you a lot of information. Uh, because I've already worked in it, my system defaults now to all. Uh, yours, when it first loads, may be on the day, -ish, the day view. Um, basically, the day view gives you just that control of this singular day. I can create new entries for time. So I can, again, assign a client or project. I can add a service. I can track how much time I tracked. So say 5.5 hours. Now you might be asking yourself, whoa, you typed that in funny. Yes, 5.5 is five and a half hours. That works. You can also write it in as five, oh, there we go, five hours and 30 minutes. Um, you can also write, if I'm not, Nope, my apologies. Those are the two ways. Um, I just like to know or to note that for you folks out there, if you happen to be lawyers or something or in a field where billing down to the minute matters, uh, you can actually time this out. And I believe one minute is 0 0.0167. Yeah. So you can actually bill right down to the minute. And on your invoices, it'll reflect as a four digit number, like point you know, four digits. Um, so you can be that exact if needed, or you can just round up whatever works for you. Again, for our purposes, five and a half hours for me, this is who's tracking it. It says your name because that's how I've set up the company. Today's date works for me and you can put in your notes. Nice and easy for me. I'm gonna mark this time as billable and we're gonna hit save. And that's all you got to do. As mentioned, unbillable status. And for this project, because the project was yellow, all of the hours are going to be yellow as well. So that's the day view. You can flip between. It's very easy to do. Um, you can also check who's logged hours. Again, if you have multiple team members, you'll have more appear here. But you can check all team members at once or just your own timesheet. We also have a weekly view. Um, so on this view, it's handy for if you have to go in and enter a lot of time. So I can sit here and now that I've set up carpentry for the back deck project, I can put in four hours here, three hours and 15 minutes there, maybe 15 minutes here and so on. As long as I hit save, those will all get entered. And then on this way of looking at it, if I need to do a different project or service, I just hit new row. I select my project or service, click the check mark, and now I can add in more time. Very easy. Just remember, hit save. Uh, so our next view over is my personal favorite. It's monthly um, because it gives you the most control. Um, so from this monthly view, I can click on any given day. I can see what is currently on it. I can add an entry. I can zip over to this one. I can see everything. Uh, and I can choose to mark as billable. I can add notes. This gives you more control of the individual entries as opposed to, say, weekly view, which only lets you enter the amount of hours. So. One last view I'll show you before we get into a little more nitty gritty about time tracking is the all view. So in the all view here, we can check out the whole month. We can zip back between various months. 
and we can come down and see all time entries. Now, because I just went through on that weekly view and punched in a bunch, uh, we have a ton of stuff you folks can see here. Um, again, I can click on and edit at any time, uh, and that way it's easy to use. One thing I like to showcase as well is the timer. So I've done everything so far by manually entering it, clicking it, adding in how many hours I need. I can also set a timer. So I can come in here, hit start timer, add my client or project, again, my service, some notes, and I can tuck that away and do other stuff. So while I tuck that away, we're gonna check out some settings. So currently um, within time tracking, you can click on more actions, time tracking settings. Sorry about that, I had a little cough. Uh, and from here, we can flip it from duration to start at end time. So if you prefer for time tracking purposes to enter, you know, work started at nine o'clock, work ended at five o'clock or whatever your vocation might need, you can do that and simply hit save. And now that it's saved, if we go back, you'll see the five and a half hours and it's given a start and stop time. For these entries specifically, because I entered them with our duration, it defaults to simply midnight. Or sorry, uh, noon, not midnight. Um, you can easily edit this, just click on it, erase and start typing. Um, so if you're intent on having start and stop times, I would recommend first flip this over to start and end and hit save. So now that we have a minute or so on our tracker, because it needs a minute minimum, uh, we can go in and hit log time. And look at that, we've got it here. Uh, because it tracked more than a minute and a half, it rounds up to two minutes. Um, it doesn't, we don't yet in the system have the ability to track to the accuracy of seconds, um, but also I don't believe we bill out in seconds either. Uh, so it works out well. Um, Absolutely, I can sit here and amend these times if I need, uh, or I can resume timer. So you might notice it has restarted my count now, but it still remembers two minutes. So for the purpose of showing you this, we're gonna add on five. And I'm gonna log time. And now it's logged in that extra bit for me. And that's basically the keys to time tracking. Uh, one thing I do like to demonstrate is if you're working on Chrome like myself, uh, you can go ahead and get this extension. So if you go to your, your Chrome, just Google FreshBooks Chrome extension, you'll have the time tracker. This will allow you to sign in just like you do with your account. Uh, and then you can go in actually and basically have access to add entries or start timers. And that way, if you're doing research or whatever online, you don't actually have to think about all of the, uh, you know, being logged in. You just have this. Additionally, I can't show you this, but on your phone, you could download our FreshBooks app, do the exact same thing from there. So we've tracked time, we've tracked expenses. Uh, it's time to check out getting paid because we all like getting paid, don't we? Uh, so we are going to pop back over to the project. And you can already see here, we've got tracked hours. We have, you know, uh, it's starting to rack up how much time things are worth for us based on those service rates I set. And it's very easy to, from here, again, edit anything you need, but also make invoices. So we've got time tracked. We've got expenses, it's time to get paid. Oh, uh, I do see some questions have come in. Awesome, and Holly is on it. Thank you, Holly. Uh, so let's get paid. So we've got time tracking, we've got expenses. We're gonna go ahead and hit more actions and generate invoice. Again, this is an extremely granular approach to this. So when I click this, it's gonna pop up this lovely window, one of my favorite things. So this is asking us to review unbilled time and expenses for 
the client of FreshBooks. It shows the company name. Um, we have the date range, which we can change if we want. Personally, I don't think it's ever necessary to change it uh, because of how our system displays information, which you can if you only want to bill one month at a time or something like that. Um, so for all time, because we are in this project, it's showing this project, we can choose what expenses. So only unbilled expenses assigned to selected projects, back deck, or no expenses at all. Uh, and for time entry format, we're going to hit show preview. So the detailed time entry format will show you the service, the project that's a part of, the person who did it, the date that it was done on, and the amount of hours, as well as the rate. And that's what it'll actually show you. Um, you do have the ability to control the details included. So you can remove the service, the person who did it, uh, the notes. And if you do, it'll slim it down and, and show less information as you go. Or if you want to show something like that, you could do so as well. Totally within your control. Um, another thing I like to show is these different settings. So there's detailed, which shows everything. There's grouped which will put them together by service. So carpentry was done on the back deck project by your name uh, between these dates, this many hours, this amount, there's that minute I tracked. Uh, and then simple basically just says, here's the whole project. Here's everything that was tracked, all the hours, done. So I'm gonna do grouped just cause I think it looks clean. And we're gonna hit add to invoice. So now, as you can see, we've got our three different services we provided, the time tracked, and our single expense for Home Depot for 100 bucks. As mentioned, you could have added an image here, and it would appear down here for you. And if you want, you can still click on this and add more attachments. If you have some sort of contract you want to add in there, maybe some nice pictures, whatever makes you happy, you can add it on there. So now that we've got this invoice set up, uh, we can really sort of take a look. So we're billing it to Holly. Uh, we've got the issue date as today. We can change that if we like. You've got the due date as system default after 30 days. You can change that at will to 15 days or whatever you like. Uh, you can click a custom date in which you can just pick when it's due. Uh, or you can pick on date of issue if you want to be paid right away. Uh, I'll keep the default of 30 days just so you can see what, what it looks like within our systems later. Uh, you can also change the invoice number. As you can see, uh, my invoice number for testing is set up as Conrad. Uh, three is this one. It does serialize. So because my invoice number has the number here, um, if I make another invoice, it will be invoice four, then invoice five and six and so on. Um, our system defaults is this. So if you have a brand new account, this is what you'll see. And as you make more and more invoices, it'll just keep adding numbers and tracking for you. Uh, please note, when changing around the invoice numbers, if you've already used one, even if you've deleted the invoice, because it is all ultimately kept, you will not be able to use it again. Um, so just bear that in mind. We also have the option for reference numbers. So if you want to add on a specific PO number for this work, you could do, or maybe something like that. Uh, and this way on the invoices page, you'll be able to pull this up a little easier uh, for just demonstration sake. I'll put in cowboy. Uh, you can change your company information right on here if you want to add more details. Um, and we can add taxes. So this is a rather important bit I like to touch on. So when you click add tax, whatever taxes you have in the system appear again. You'll notice my GST is here for Canada. I can hit add another tax and it will let me create one. Um, please note, I haven't yet created this, so I can delete it. Once you've created a tax, however, it cannot be undeleted. Um, you don't have to use it. You can edit what that taxes associated with like the invoices, items, and expenses, um, but it cannot be deleted. Um, you can change them though, but I'll hit add. And if I want every item to have it, I can hit apply taxes to all line items and apply. Uh, so now say Holly has been an awesome person to work with and I want to give Holly a little discount. 
So we've got our subtotal, we've got our taxes. The amount due right now is this. I'm gonna hit add a discount and I'll give Holly a 10% discount just because. Now, if in your line of work, you also, maybe you do estimates and things like that, uh, which we touch on in another webinar, um, you may though be able to mock this up for whatever work you're doing. And you may request a deposit. So you might want funds up front to be able to buy materials or just as a an insurance that they're gonna go through with the work. You can hit request a deposit. You can select a percentage of the total or a flat rate amount, totally up to you. And add deposit. Uh, what will happen is this will then ask them to pay the deposit basically ASAP, and then the rest will be due later on. Uh, you can also add a payment schedule. So if this was a really big invoice, um, you can add up to 12 different payments. Uh, this, our system, uh, it needs a minimum of at least two, uh, and it can work on a percentage or flat basis, but either way, it will show you how much is left. And it, you have to make sure that it always equals 100%. Oh. Uh, and you can also dictate when those payments are due. So we'll hit add to schedule so that they pay us on the 6th of April and the 7th of April. The first one's 30 days after today. Or my apologies. Sorry, these are, are weeks out or a week out and the next day. Um, on the invoice, we also have notes and terms. So if you want to write something for this particular invoice, but it will not be hanging around for every other invoice. So it's specific for Holly and her back deck for our example. You could write it in here. If you wanted something to stick around for every invoice going forward until you change it, uh, you could write it in your terms section. A lot of the time I see something like, thank you for your business. Or, you know, you could put, you know, please pay, make payment to, and then your company name or whatever you might need for someone to write you a check. Uh, and you could save it there. So another thing, uh, the last thing rather, um, invoices I'll touch on uh, for building one is the menu here. So this menu we've actually seen. The four FreshBooks menu is the client menu where we have those controls. You can edit them here from the client profile or at time of creation. In the settings section for the invoice, however, we can control whether or not we have online payments. So if you're going to enable online payments within FreshBooks, um, you can do it right from here. If you click yes without it set up, it'll walk you over through that and I'll show that next. Um, but once it's enabled, you can choose to accept credit card, accept ACH or both or none, totally up to you depending on what you feel is best. And you can allow partial payments uh, if you like. You can also customize the invoice style. So the style you're looking at now is our simple style. Uh, it was, well, the name has kind of got it all. It's simplistic, very cut and dry, right to the chase, easy to read. We have our modern style, a little more nice. Uh, you can put a bigger banner here for your company as opposed to just a smaller logo, which can be present here. You can see it sort of in our demo. Or we have our classic style, which is based off of FreshBooks Classic. So if you're a user of FreshBooks Classic and like that system, you're welcome to use this as well. Um, or if you just like the way it looks, that works too. Uh, within the style as well, as you can see, we can choose colors. So we can go purple, which is the color I like. We can go red, blue, green, gray, or you have the entirety of the chroma key at your fingertips. Uh, you can just click and drag as wanted and pick a different color. Like I said, totally up to you. I just like purple. And then if you wanted, you can also make this template or this invoice a recurring template. Um, so what this would involve, because we've added time to it, uh, would be basically 
every month on the selected date, any time tracked in the last month or last period that we're setting up the recurring template for, would get added to the recurring template and build out to our clients. For our purposes, I'm just going to hit save on this uh, because this gets a little complex and I want to show you this cut and try before I make something like a recurring template. So we have covered everything on the invoice. Again, you can add attachments here. You could add your logo. Uh, you could change the invoice number, issue date, due date. And we have our reference, Cowboy. So I'm going to hit save. So now it takes us back to the project uh, because that's what's made. So because I hit save, this is a draft invoice. It hasn't actually gone anywhere. Uh, what I could do is open up the invoice again, hit more actions, and send by email. Uh, while you're creating the invoice, you could hit send to as well. Both work. And what will happen is it'll automatically populate the email I've associated with the client. If I like, I can add another email here, just like that. Uh, and this would go to the second person. Just be aware that this email address, because I've typed it here, will not be saved towards the client. Uh, you can though make contacts within it if you like. You can also change the subject or body of the email as you see fit. What you're looking at here is our, our default. Uh, and these blue fields are referring to something. So the company name is what you provide in the settings. So it'll be whatever your company name is. It'll be the invoice number, in this case, Conrad 3, the invoice amount of well, the total, uh, as well as the due date. And again, here's where, because we've enabled this in the client creation, we can attach that PDF copy. And we can even preview what this will look like. It's very nice. Um, so now I'm going to hit send invoice. And now we can see sent. The invoice was created today. And I sent the invoice to the client for that amount on that date. So I am going to pop back to our invoices page. And again, recently active. So we now have the sent status instead of draft. So sent is nice and yellow. Uh, if they make a partial payment, it will show partial. So let's do that. So from the invoice itself, again, I'll open it up. because I want to show you folks a variety of ways. I'm going to hit right here. We're going to say they gave us 50 bucks cash perfect and i can send an email notification to let them know perfect so now you see it says partial back on our invoices page it'll say partial as well if it goes overdue it can also it'll turn red and nice and angry for us so actually i'm going to edit this to yesterday. And now you'll see it's overdue. And finally, I can come up here and click more actions and add payment, which functions the exact same as down here. Or again, education for you fine folks. I'm going to hover over this. We're going to click on the add payment button. the date paid in full by check for the remaining balance. Our system will always try and, and hope that you've been paid the full amount. Um, and that way it's just nice and easy. And we can click on save. And now it's paid. Wonderful. So now we can bounce back to our project just because this has become the hub for everything. And we can see all that time is billed. Expenses are billed, invoice is paid. We have the hours logged, which is great. So it can show us everything. We aren't over budget at all, nothing left to bill. And we hit profitability. And it looks like actually we're not doing so great. Uh, 
we've spent more on this than we've made, unfortunately. Uh, but that is how it can show you the function of it and how it all works. Um, you can obviously see all of this stuff as well from the invoice page, expenses and time tracking. Um, additionally, from the client page, as mentioned, projects are sort of like clients within clients. So if we click on the client themselves, we'll click on the invoice, then we can see the invoice from that project. It tells us the project right here. And at the status, we can come over to expenses. And again, tells us the project, the status, and the time tracked. So it's all very for straightforward. It wants to give you a lot of information all of a sudden. Uh, and that way you have access to it no matter what you do. Um, one thing I will show you is the long way for creating the invoice. So for time tracking, I'm going to add an entry just for our test, say 10 hours for this project. And billable, perfect. We're going to log that time. All right, so we're going to pop back to the dashboard. We're going to click Create New Invoice. I'm going to click on Add a Client. We're going to add our singular client. And now we're going to click Add a Line Item. So this golden bar appears for exactly what we did previously. We're going to import unbuilt time, expenses, and projects. So now because I'm doing this from the dashboard and I've selected a client, it's giving me access to everything I've tracked towards that client. So again, date range can be chosen. I can select the project. Um, if you have multiple projects, this will not, or you'll select all will appear because it, it'll assume you want to build out everything, but you can go in and choose individual projects if you like. We can go all unbuilt expenses for this client. There isn't any others, but that's the default. And again, we've got our time we just tracked. So we're going to add to invoice. And that's basically how it would go. Um, it's very straightforward. Um, and we can even make this one recurring. Oh, my apologies, folks. So we're going to remove this. We've selected our client, which is the minimum. We'll hit make recurring. So when it comes to the recurring template, it's based off of the issue date. So today's date, we are gonna add a line item. And for our purposes, I am gonna hit the import unbuilt time and expenses. You'll notice this is sort of gone because the date range will be set based on the recurring schedule for the template. And how do we wanna display it? detailed, grouped, or simple. And again, it gives us the control to add or remove what we like. I'll put grouped. All unbuilt time and expenses. Perfect. Hit save. So on the 31st of every month, due on the same day, we can always change the next issue date if we like. But on the 31st of the month, on a monthly basis, weekly, yearly, custom, whatever you want to set it up to. Uh, for how often is this going to happen? Infinitely or a chosen amount of times. We will send an invoice automatically or create a draft and send manually. That way you have a chance to edit it or review if you prefer. I'll put send invoice automatically so you see what it looks like. We then have allow or accept online payments, allow clients to save credit cards to make automatic payments. If you check this off, what will happen is they'll have to enter their payment details every single time. For a recurring template, if you enable it, when they enter their details the first time, there'll be an option to save their card. If they save it going forward, every recurring template will automatically charge out the amount. They don't actually have to think about it. They'll get an email showing the invoice as paid, the total amount. It's just easy, it's quick, that way you don't have to think about it, they don't have to think about it. So we'll hit done. And again, the same types of settings are available, just like every other invoice, the style, um, the, you can re-edit the schedule if you like, uh, the ability to have online payments, and of course the client settings. 
But for our purposes, just want to show you this. I'll hit save. And again, the email auto generates subject and body. I'll hit save. So here's our recurring template. Oh, oops. Don't need that. I'm going to go to invoices. And this is the invoice that was created. So you can see it's created because it says recurring right here. And if I click on that, it'll take me to that template. It'll also have that serialized number I mentioned. So because it was Conrad 3, now it's Conrad 4. It has been sent. And it added on the track time for that time period. So the next one, my April, end of April, like don't truthfully know the day. Uh, the end of April invoice will contain any hours tracked from April 1st to the end of April. And it functions the exact same way. So you can add a payment, your client can make a payment, all that good stuff. First and foremost, you might notice at the top here, we have a, a notice now, a little bell lets us know what's going on. So if you have stuff left to do, our system wants to let you know, so you can download the app, you can complete online payment setup, which for my purposes, I've half done to show you some stuff, but you can verify your business uh, and tell them basically where to deposit your funds. Uh, this is WePay or FreshBooks Payments, um, but this will show you your most recent notices, whether it was something sent, something paid. So we're going to click on the little gear icon, or you can click on your initials, and we'll go to settings. So within here, you can see the settings, the name on the account, the email associated with it. You can change those things. You can change your company information as well as set a standard rate. You can change your logo and themes and your email notifications, what gets sent to you. We also have billing and upgrade. So because mine's on a trial basis just for demonstration and testing and purposes, it shows this. If you're still on a trial, you'll see this as well. Um, if you are on a regular plan, your plan will pop up. You'll be able to edit said plan, add team members, all that good stuff within the cost of your plan. We can also go to online payment settings. So as mentioned, I've started this already. So I've enabled this. We also work with Stripe and PayPal. If you like, you just hit connect with and you'll be able to start setting those accounts up. Um, if you have an existing PayPal account that is a personal account, please note, if you try and connect it, it will force it to flip over to a business account because it's required. Um, and once you've set up one of your payment gateways, you'll have account settings and all transactions. This all transactions tab will be your best friend, I promise you. Um, so it's empty for me, but for yourself, if you have it already set up, you can go check it out. It'll show you all of your payments you've processed through one of our various gateways, as well as the current amount to be paid out. Uh, and when it's to be paid out, you'll see estimated deposit date. Uh, we also have bank connections. So I manually created an expense earlier. You may have a lot of expenses you want to track in our system, and that might take a long time to do manually. So we have three different banking import partners that we work with. Uh, this one is Plaid, or sorry, this one is Yodley. Um, it's not written in any particular spot. Uh, it's just from experience, I know it. Uh, if we hop over to our support page... You can see Plaid, Salt Edge, and Yodley, Yodley, as well as what they look like. So because mine looks like this, I know it's Yodley. So if you happen to bank with one of these banks, cool, you can click on it. If you don't see your bank, as I don't, you hit find your bank, you confirm you're not a robot. And now you can type the name of your bank. Oh, there you go. So that's my bank. So I would click on that. I would then put in my username and password, hit submit, and then it will go through the process of sending me two-step verification or anything like that that is set up.
um, to protect my account. Once I've connected it, it'll show me the bank accounts I have available. It'll look like that. I can choose whether or not to have them import. I can choose only one or multiple, whatever you might need. I can give them nicknames. And then once I'm done, I hit import. And then finally, our system will allow up to 90 days prior to be imported. So if you're doing it now, you could probably get January 1st in or depending on the days of the month, second or third, um, but that's how you would do it. Um, all I ask is once you hit done, give it 10 minutes, let it sit. You can open up another tab and do other work, but the tab in which this exists, let it sit. Uh, after 10 minutes, you're good to go. You can then navigate away. Uh, and within 24 hours, your expenses will start being brought in. Um, our system will try and automatically categorize your expenses. As you can see, like I put that one there custom for the expenses brought in by your bank connection. Our system will try and put something in there. You can easily edit it and you can even teach it. Uh, if it's using a wrong one, you can teach it the correct one. Um, additionally, you'll see here, this says under the date, the source is my name or your name. Um, if it's a bank connection, it'll actually have the name of the bank account, whether that's business credit card, uh, Amex Platinum, like whatever the card name is, it'll appear there. That way you know where it came from. Uh, so we also have apps and integrations. So if you want to connect FreshBooks with something else like Squarespace, um, if you want to send invoices by physical mail, we have mail form. If you want to do payroll and stuff, which is very popular for people who work with teams, you can connect with Gusto. Uh, you can connect with Gmail and it'll create clients and invoices based off your Gmail contacts. Um, there is a whole bunch. I highly recommend you hit view integrations. It'll take you to our view in our integration shop, which shows you a whole bunch. Um, please note by shop, I don't mean you have to pay for the use of the integration. Um, each integration might have a cost, like I believe Gusto has one. Um, but for instance, the Gmail connection, there's no cost to it. It's just setting it up and downloading it. So this is kind of like your app store. Um, if you see, or rather, if you do not see an app that you want to integrate in the app store here, check out Zapier or Integromat. So these two programs, their whole thing is to connect one program to another that don't already have a connection built. That's what they're for. Uh, I believe there's a cost for Zapier, uh, but it'll help you connect basically anything you want with FreshBooks, uh, and they'll show you how to do it. I mean, you can always contact them about creating custom ones that do not yet exist or applying to have software built. Bear with me, I'm going to have a quick sip of water. So we also have our emails and templates. So when you pop over here, these will allow you to set up the defaults for what a new invoice looks like. So you can actually dictate a new template right here if you like. All you have to do is change it up and hit save. You can do the same thing with recurring invoices, automatic recurring template notifications, online payment notifications, all that good stuff. Then you can add an email signature if you like uh, to your account. Now we come back to items and services. So. Um, earlier, I didn't really touch on this. So services are things that we track time towards, such as carpentry, concrete, concrete pouring, or digging, like you saw me do with time tracking. If we add an item to an invoice directly, so you make a new invoice, you hit add line item, and you just type, it'll be considered an item. It's not something you track time towards. It is merely something you purchase. This could be a physical object, piece of lumber, computer chip. It could also be just your time or your fee for your work. Um, there is a lot we can do with this. So within services, uh, we can look at carpentry here, which I fully filled out. So we have the name of carpentry, the description, the rate, the taxes, that it is billable. Please note, because it is marked billable in the items and services window, it is enabled to be billable elsewhere. You can 
at the specific entry make it unbillable if you like. If you do not make this billable, you will not have the option elsewhere to make it billable. So I recommend leaving this as such, unless you have a service, something like internal maintenance that you're never going to charge a client for. Um, you can also check off the automatically add service to a project. So this means that every time a new project is created, this service will appear just like it did with mine. Um, and obviously you can edit this at your will. You can also create new service and create a totally new one. But that's how services work. And then we have items very similar. So we can create the item name. We can give it a description. We can give it a rate and a tax. And then we can track the inventory of the item. So if it's a physical item that you might sell, we have a, our simple system here where you can enter in how many of you have. And as that item enters more and more invoices, oh, uh, that amount will get reduced to ultimately zero um, until basically you, you would need to come in and enter it once you have more stock. But that's how items work. Um, and as always, just like with clients, just like with invoices, we have archived and deleted. So if you delete a service that you actually need back, you can always undelete it later by coming in here, clicking on whatever you might need, and undeleting it. It's that easy. We also have the payroll setup, which links nicely to Gusto, just to make life easy. Um, and then we have, obviously, you can log out. Our payments page allows you to see payments on invoices and add them to there if you like. You can also edit payments as needed. Um, if you do online payments and you need to say do a refund, when the payment appears here, if it's online, it'll have a blue border instead of a green. And you'll be able to come over here and beside the pencil, you'll see a counterclockwise arrow. You can click on it and that'll let you do your refunding. So. As I mentioned earlier, you might have team members, employees, or contractors. So yourself will show up here as the owner with your billable and cost rates, or they're going to hit invite. So when you're inviting someone um, on our plus plan and up, an accountant is free. The accountant account shows and has less in it than the uh, main account. Um, they basically get access to reports, accounting, uh, and expenses. I always like to default to this page here, because this is actually what shows them how to get started if you add them uh, and what you can do. And this is the list of things they can do for you. Um, again, you can easily access this by going to support.freshbooks.com. And if you type in as an accountant or just accountant, uh, it'll pull up and you can access this very easily. Uh, contractors can track time and expenses towards projects and clients you assign them to. Uh, and they can send you invoices for their time. So you can pay them and then you can create an expense from that. Uh, employees, again, kind of similar. They can track time and expenses towards projects that you've assigned them to, but they only see their own information. So they don't see other people's hours or any information you're entering. Uh, managers have a little more control than, than employees. Uh, they can access your account. Um, they do not see financial reports, expenses, or the dashboard, but they see things like invoices, uh, clients. If you make them a project manager, they have basically full control of the project. Uh, and then admin, basically an admin is an owner, except they cannot cancel the account and change payment details. Uh, so to add a team member, it's really easy. You'll hit your desired version, say a contractor, you'll give it a name. I'm not very creative. Uh, and an email address. And hit continue. So this is our default. Again, you can go ahead and change any of the statement that you like. You hit send invitation. And they will receive then an invitation to be brought onto the project. And this will allow you to dictate what project you want them on. If you have more projects, you'll be able to scroll through and see them, or you can just invite them to all. Totally up to you, but you can assign them to those projects.
And that's how you add people to your team um, within the scope of a project if you want them to be able to do work on it. They're going to edit said project. And because I've assigned them to it, they're already here. But you can click on team members, and then you can add them. Just make sure they're checked off. Hit update team members and save. That's all you got to do. Um, so we have, truth be told, pretty much touched on everything uh, for today's webinar. Um, I also recommend checking out reports. Uh, these five reports here are the most popular. The invoice details report shows you everything about reports. And with filters, you can get a lot of specific information out of it. Expense reports does the same thing, but for expenses. Account, accounts aging shows you who owes you money and by how much. Profit and loss, very straightforward, shows you sales minus expenses for profit, uh, minus your taxes, and that's where the sales tax summary comes in. So these five reports tend to be the, the big ones uh, that I always recommend people look at. We have a lot more available to you, but that's at your discretion. Uh, you also have the accounting tab. Um, so once you have a bank connected, you'll be able to do bank reconciliation, which is basically the process of making sure the entries in FreshBooks match those within your bank account. And that way, you know, all your reports are accurate. Um, your accountant will be able to do this if you add them as a team member. Uh, and then we have specific accounting reports here, such as profit and loss uh, and others that are more detailed. Um, or you can even check out the chart of accounts should you wish. Uh, it is rather complex. Um, truth be told, if you are not an accountant, I don't recommend diving into it. Uh, you are welcome to do so at your own discretion, however. Uh, and then lastly, our very bottom tab, we have our add-ons, which is a mix of things like adding team members, choosing different plans, adding online payments, Gusto payroll stuff, and bookkeeping features for through Bench. Uh, we have a lot of availability at your fingertip, depending on what your specific needs are for your business. Thank you there, folks. I had a last quick sip of water. Uh, and truth be told, we have covered everything in the account that I want to make sure we show you today. Uh, so, folks, if ever you have more questions, more in-depth stuff that you're not sure about, Whatever you might need, all you have to do, click on your initials or click the little gear, come down to help. When you click on help, this window will appear. Uh, so if you have a specific question you want answered, you can click on ask us and that'll send support in email. Um, you can contact us directly by emailing support at freshbooks.com, uh, but we'll get that and that way you can reach out to us. We can also, you can view the help center, which is support at freshbooks.com. Super handy spot. Uh, you can search by keywords and access pretty much all of our documentation. And last but not least, if you have more questions that you can't quite figure out or you just want to talk to somebody, we're happy to help. Click on call us. It'll give you a local phone number. So in my area, this is the number uh, and it'll give you a support key. So this support key is a unique code to you. It changes every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and basically when you provide that to us, we can bring up your account, you're verified by it. We jump right in and we can start helping you with your specific issue. Uh, and that way the process is easy for you. So again, if you need to contact us, click on your initials or the gear, hit help call us and we'll be able to, or you can reach out to us easily by providing us the support key. Um, that does conclude the presentation for today, folks. Thank you so much for coming in.